very glad to be here. My name is Christian, and I'm coming from a country very near to, to this. It's called Romania. I'm pretty sure you've heard of it. And um, I really appreciate that you guys are here. I was, when, when I've seen that I'm, my presentation is during Facebook, I was like, wow, OK, I won't see more than two or three people in the room. So I really, really appreciate it. Um, I'm from an agency in Romania called Canopy. Canopy means the highest place in the forest, and uh, our motto is taking digital to new heights. We are a team of uh, 12 members, 10 are humans and uh, two cats. Uh, are there any cat people in the room? Okay, only a few. And dog persons? Ah, okay. <laughs> or both. Actually, I'm, a, I'm also a dog person, but I'm more... Um, I don't really uh, have time to go with a dog in the parks and something like that. It's, it's more um, easier to have a cat, especially in the office. And today I'm going to um, talk about how uh, our cat uh, helped us in our uh, marketing. And um, in just about one year and a half, we, we have become uh, in top five performance marketing in, uh, in Romania. And I really, really think that using this model that I'm going to show you, um, you can use it in almost any, th any business. And having a cat can be a big plus in your uh, company. Uh, if you think about the consumers nowadays, they are like living in heaven, but they are still complaining about a lot of stuff. Um, when you are a consumer, you are searching for free online. You are not paying anything. You are socializing for free. You don't pay to go on Facebook or on Twitter. Uh, you are uh, watching videos on YouTube for free. You are doing a lot, a lot of stuff for free. Okay? Uh, think about that consumers are clicking ads. Okay? They are clicking ads, but they don't really realize that someone is paying for those ads. Uh, and that's a kind of fr frustration from a company when you are a business or when you are an agency and want to try to improve the results of a, a company. When you are a company, when you are a business, you are also somehow privilegiated because online is easier to, uh, to, to grow a business. You don't have to rent a space in the city center. You don't have to ha have that many people. You don't. Uh, you have your, uh, off, your you have your business open 24 hours a day, and so on. Yeah. But still, if you um, think about the consumer, even they are living in heaven, uh, they are complaining. They don't really like ads. And I am coming from a conference in Moldova where was uh, were about 400 uh, people in the room, and uh, I have asked how many of you hate ads. I mean, if you have the option to not see ads, how many of you would tick that option? And probably most of you do the same. You will tick that option. I don't want to see any ads. And it's funny because in Moldova and also here, you guys are from advertising. You are either from an agency or a company or a startup, and you need ads. Yeah, it's, and it's very funny because if we as a business hate ads and don't, don't want to see ads, think about the consumers, OK? And I want to talk to you about a way how to grow uh, a business without investing that, uh, that, uh, a lot of money. Uh, there are two types of ways to grow a business or to grow a brand. The first one is uh, the classical one, the old one, which works today also. And it says that you need to first build the brand, invest in uh, advertising, and then the clients uh, will come, okay? And it still works today uh, very good. And the new way of growing a business is to start with the end, I mean, start with the clients, and let the clients or the customers create your brand. I wish those were uh, my words, but there is this guy, uh, Martin, Neumeier, Martin Neumeier, who I highly recommend you to read. He wrote a couple of books. One of them is uh, The Brand Flip, another one is The Brand Gap. They are very, very good, and they uh, tell you how to invest in your, uh, in your brand. And nowadays, especially with this commodity for the user to search online, to search for mobile, and not buy, they can do a lot of research for free, it's even 
more important for you to grow a brand. Yeah, because when um, the, the decision is easier uh, when buying if you are a known brand, and you probably know, know this. And we have this funnel who I suppose most of you guys uh, know about it. It's a purchase funnel, and you start, this is a process where uh, the consumer fills in, and first you have the awareness, uh, people must know that you exist, or your, your product or service exists. Uh, then a couple of them are interested in your product or service, then it comes consideration, uh, intent, evaluation, and the evaluation is very easy online, and hopefully there will be the purchase. And you want to reach mainly the people who are in this area. Yeah, you, you want to invest more in, into this rather than in, in this. And on the other hand, there are the um, advertising channels, which can be TV, outdoor, uh, Facebook, Google, Instagram, and so on. And businesses are putting money, and they put money, and money, and a lot of money, and investing in these advertising channels. And hopefully, they hope to come the clients. Yeah, one by one, on, one by one. And they are investing like a lot of money. Of course, if you invest in Google or Facebook, the chances to get to these people who are in this uh, stage are higher. And when you invest uh, in TV and outdoor, the chances to, to grow the awareness are higher. And what Mo Marty is saying is that, is that we should move to this funnel to a ladder. Yeah? And when you start a business, you should start with the client first. Yeah? Let's say we have five clients or ten clients. Let's say we have ten, uh, ten clients in the beginning. And these ten clients are very easy to find. We have our friends, we have our family, we ha have our mates at the uh, working place and so on. It's so easy to find ten clients. If, you, if we have a problem to find ten clients, we shouldn't start any business at all. Um, and what Marty says, we should take these clients and move them from one step to another one uh, to the the one that uh, is above. And the first one is the satisfaction one. The first step in the ladder is the satisfaction one. And this means that we need to satisfy these 10 clients. It's very, very important to make sure that our product or our service satisfies these 10 clients. If we cannot satisfy 10 clients in the beginning, it's very hard to believe that we will going to satisfy 100 or 1,000 clients when you, we reach that point. Yeah, so this is the first step, the satisfaction one, which creates confidence in the clients that we start with. And then we want to move them on the other step, which is the delight step. Yeah, we want to make sure that the clients are happy with our product. And this is the moment when we are starting to interact with our clients. It's the moment when we can adapt our business for our clients, yeah? Remember that we have only 10 clients, yeah? And it's a moment that we can find out that we have some issues in our business, and we can fix those issues in the very beginning. We can ask those clients' opinion and uh, put them questions like, um, what were, were your expectations from us? Uh, were we satisfying your expectations? Uh, was the, the product the one that you wanted? Was the services as you were expecting? And so on. And in this phase, we can actually change our business and optimize our business in order to make those clients happy. Yeah, and the moment, it's the moment when we can adapt our clients easy on the consumer's expectations. And it's easy to change our business because, remember, we only have 10 clients. And then we need to, we should move to the, uh, the other step, which is the engagement one. On this phase, we want to create a medium where our clients will gonna share their opinion about us. Yeah, we can create a Facebook group, we can create a forum, or we can um, try to encourage them to tell the world about the products they have bought from us, okay? And on this step, we want to make sure that our clients are starting to spread the word um, about us. 
And the last one, the last step, which is the hardest to achieve, is the empowerment step. Yeah? And it's actually the step when your clients cannot live without you, without your brand, without your business. Yeah? And it's very hard to achieve that, that, uh, that step. And if you think about a couple of businesses, uh, something like Apple, they are following this ladder. Okay? Think about that Apple has some very, very strong fans that are believing in the brand and they are there to protect them if they will have any issues. And also, the Android users are the same. Yeah? They are heavy users of Android and if an Apple fan comes to them, they will defend them. Yeah? And we at Canopy have followed this ladder since the beginning of our uh, company. And I can tell you that it works really, really well. We, we have started with 10 or 15 clients, yeah, and in one year and a, and a half, we have reached about 60, uh, 60 clients. Yeah? And I think it also works not only in terms of the clients, of the, of the customers, it w also works in terms of uh, your team. Yeah, when you are a startup, you want to create, you want to build a team, you want to build a very strong team. Uh, and you start with one or maximum two people because you are a startup and you don't have a lot of money to invest and a lot of uh, people to come into your business and you want those people to, bear, to, to be very, very appropriate in your business. Yeah, and you want to move them the same from one step to another. Yeah, you want to reach uh, your team, your, the members of your team to be here and you want the members of your team to go uh, drinking beer and talk to other friends that it's very nice at the company that they are working uh, at. And it's very nice and they are uh, paid well and uh, they are doing good stuff and so on. Yeah, so this model works in, uh, in other ways too. Another very important uh, thing to consider is to focus on your customers. I'm not sure how it's in Serbia, but in Romania, this is a big problem. Yeah? Companies are, st are not focusing on their clients as much as uh, they should be. They keep wanting new and new uh, clients, but they forget to focus on their existing uh, clients. And this is very, very important. Focus on your existing clients. The existing clients are the ones that already gave money in your business, and you need to show appreciations them first and then focus on new clients. If you appreciate your existing clients, it will be easier for them to go and spread the world about how good you are. And we have the client and we have a product or service. And the product have fe features, has features and also has benefits. And these features and benefits are the experience, experiences and also meanings to the consumers. Yeah, that's the way that a product or service goes. Yeah, it has features and benefits, and those features and benefits are delivering an experience or a meaning to your consumers. It's very important to focus on the last two, because people are sharing experiences and meanings on Facebook. People are talking about uh, experiences and meanings from their lives. They won't talk about the features that your product have. They don't talk about the benefits that your product will, uh, will bring to them. They will talk about the experience that they have or they, they've had with your uh, product or service. And this is very, very important to focus on the experience or the meaning that you are uh, going to bring in, uh, into your uh, customer's life. A couple of interesting uh, numbers by uh, Martin Neumeyer. In many categories, the most loyal 10% of your customers are bringing 50% of the revenues. Yeah, so 10% of the customers are bringing 50% of the revenues. Yeah, why not focusing on those 10% of the customers? Yeah, it's very important to focus on the clients that are delivering the most, are bringing the most value into your business. Five increase in uh, your loyal uh, 
clients can bring up to 95 increase in your pro profits. Yeah, focus on the loyal clients. Focus on the clients that are recurring to your business. And the last one, 50% of the customers, we would pay 20, 25 more percent for your services or, or, or a higher price and won't leave you uh, for the same, uh, won't go to your competition. Yeah? That means that if you increase your prices with 25%, with up to 25%, you will still not gonna lose uh, your loyal clients. Yeah? So you can sell a premium service to your clients, to your loyal clients, yeah, without losing them. You don't really want all the clients. You want certain clients. There are some cases when the clients in your business are creating a damage. Yeah, they are not bringing you any profits. They are actually creating a damage in your business. And we, we have this situation. We have small clients who are asking us a lot of stuff and they are asking and asking and asking stuff and they are paying a small fee and those clients are damaging our business. I'm not sure if you know that Zappos, which is a big brand from US, since they are actually the biggest one in terms of um, shoes, they are firing their clients. They are firing the clients that are not profitable for them. For example, if there is a client who returns the shoes for five times, yeah, he is being called by someone from Zappos telling them, you know what, we are very sorry we are not satisfying you, I'm sure that it's not your problem, it might be our problem, but we cannot work together. Yeah? It's easier for you to go to our competition, they are directing to some specific uh, brands, but they encourage them to not come back to them because they are damaging their businesses. And it's very important to, to, to find which is the best profile of clients for your business. You really, you don't want all the clients in the world. You want to have only specific types of clients. And there is a good book to read about this. It's called The Pumpkin Plan, yeah, which is very, very good. And uh, it's about uh, this uh, thing. Try to surprise your client always. Yeah, it's very, very important for your clients to feel that they are appreciated. Yeah, try to surprise them, but try to su surprise them for real. If you are selling wines, yeah, don't, and, and someone buys from you uh, like a bottle of old wine, don't just uh, send them a bottle opener, a wine bottle o opener, yeah, and make them a surprise because that's not a surprise for them. I'm pretty sure that they have that in the house, but try to send them to a, um, a wine event somewhere, yeah? Try to create a wine event for the top clients of you, of yours. Yeah, that would be a surprise for them. Yeah, so try to surprise your clients uh, as much as you, uh, you can. So where is the cat in this story? Yeah, I was telling you about our cat, and we are putting a lot of uh, cat pictures on, uh, on our uh, communication. Cats, People like cats, people like animals, people like dogs, people like parrots and so on. And it's much easier to attract the attention by using a cat. It's much, much easier to attract the attention of a message that you want to, to, to tell using a cat. So we use our cats in our, most of our communication. We were doing a, um, a test uh, last month uh, and there was a... Um, uh, communication from uh, IAB, IAB Romania, which has um, made, made a study showing that uh, up to 30% of Romanian people are using Adblocker. And one of my colleagues told me that it would be a great idea to write an article about that because it's, uh, the, the, the whole uh, industry will gonna talk about this. And I said, wow, that's a great, great idea. She wrote the article, she spent up to uh, three hours two or three hours to write that article. He, she put it on uh, Facebook, and guess what? There were only five or six likes and no share, like no share. 
uh, we have uh, uh, job openings now, and uh, we have created special graphics, special landing pages to encourage people to come uh, to our company. And guess what? People won't share that thing. And when we put a, a picture with a cat, but talking about the jobs at Canopy, a lot of likes, a lot of shares are happening. And people, uh, people remember easier and are associating easier our company with our cats. We have a lot of emails coming from our potential clients asking how are the cats doing. One of the cats is called Nopi from Canopy, so it's very easy to associate with our brand. Yeah, so they really, really uh, helps us a lot. And as a main conclusion, uh, it's not that hard to reach 100 clients. It's not so hard to reach 500 uh, clients. The hardest thing to do is to make those clients to come back to you. Yeah? And that's what you want to do. Either make your clients come back, either talk about you. So just focus on these two things. Make your clients talk about you or come back one, two, three, four times and so on. This is the hardest part in, in, in a business because to reach 100 clients or 500 clients can be very easy. You're just dumping the prices. Yeah? You're just uh, offering discounts over discounts and discounts and you're going to reach those clients. But making discounts over and over again won't guarantee you those clients will come back. Yeah. Discounts actually, from my opinion, is a bad idea to make a business. Yeah, it's a good idea when you are a big brand and you assume um, that you will gonna, gonna make money on the long term. Yeah, and you will have a high volume. Yeah, and m w with a small margin. And that would be all. Thank you. Thank you, Christian. Okay, are there any questions for? I hope they are. Christian, <laughs> anybody? No. Okay, thank you very much, Christian. Then okay. we go on. Thank you.